Well, hello, mortals, and welcome to episode eight of season two of Dice Ex Machina. Tonight's episode is titled Thirst for Meaning, which comes to us directly from a Magic the Gathering card pool that we did this Monday evening on the channel uh, that Dom shared. That card pool came to us from our good friends Vampire54 and With Where With All, who donated very generously last week on the show. As you know, we are always aiming for $250 per episode. If we hit that $250 each night, it allows us to continue to pay our cast and to bring great content like this to the air. So even if you can't afford to back us, please spread the word, get those faces out there, get those faces to the channel, and uh, have your friends say hi to us, and maybe they'll be able to toss some money our way. Who knows? But if not, we still enjoy a fun show. But we want to say, again, thank you so much to our generous donators last week uh we have so those, those of you who might have checked out you might have seen the card draws that we had uh just to real quickly read through those card titles and we'll see how they impact the game tonight and also for the rest of the season um we have we had commanding prison presence we had shimmerwing chimera we had hero of the pride we had loathsome chimera we had thirst for meaning which became the episode title we had the Naiad of Hidden Coves. We had the Blight Bless Katobalpus. And the big one was the Enigmatic Incarnation. So, which was a summon monster ability, perhaps. We don't know. We'll see how it goes. Uh, so I have some fun ways that I can integrate some of those into the game. So we'll see how that plays out. But hey, a tip of just $15 can help you interact with the show. You can send us a message that we will read live on the air. We're calling it a message from the gods. You can send us a goofy or heartfelt message, and you can crush our fundraising goals all in one. And now, speaking of uh, some money coming into the show, I'm going to pass it on over to Jordan, who's going to do some advertising for us. I think this sounds like a good time to call out our sponsors. There are seasoned sponsors, Roll20 and Hero Forge, for supporting us. Roll20 gives you that feel of the tabletop virtually. Get access to great maps, tokens, sound effects, dynamic lighting, and more. Use exclamation point Roll20 in chat for info. And type exclamation point Hero Forge in chat to check out the wonderful customization tool they've created. We also have a partnership with Die Hard Dice. You can save 10% at Die Hard Dice by using the code ROLLDICE at checkout. Use command uh, exclamation point DH Dice in chat for links and info. And you can order our friend Critical Bard's dice set. Done. Bart is here, by the way. Omega is here tonight. They are just getting ready. They they had to jump over from another gig, so we are just giving them a chance to hop in, but they are here. Uh, and if, hey, while we're doing that, if you're watching this on YouTube or listening to it on a podcast, thank you so much. You are just as valuable to us as the people watching it on the live stream. So do us a solid. Leave us a like, a comment, subscribe, smash that bell. Give us feedback on your podcast app of choice, the whole nine yards. It really does help the show and the channel to grow, which is great. That was a rhyme that I did not mean, but hey, felt good. And uh, lastly, before I introduce our cast, I would like to remind you that you can now support Saving Throw Show, the channel, through tips and monthly subscriptions via coffee. If you enter coffee in the chat to check that out, you can find out that through coffee, you can tip just as you would regularly, but you can also join the Exploration Society with a monthly amount and get the same great rewards you would get if you were our Patreon subscribers. And you can unlock things like toast with your tips. Uh, plus, coffee doesn't take a cut, so nearly 100% of the money that you put into your coffee tip goes straight to the channel after Patreon pal fees which we can't do anything about so we'll just eat it we'll take we'll take that down we'll do what we can and with that out of the way i want to say hello to my lovely cast and happy halloween to everybody as well happy samal and all those things as well mm -hmm. uh let's go ahead and start with you heard his dulcet tones as he did a little bit of advertising for us hello jordan hi everybody my name is jordan pridgen and i am playing lysandros who is a satyr rogue uh who is an arcane trickster so he's a bit of an illusionist and he's a gambler and uh, he's he's really less of the steely. I mean, he does steal stuff, but he's less of the steely sort of the rogue, and the more, you know, live the life he feels like at all times kind of rogue. So uh, that's him, and he has a uh, a complicated relationship with the god Phoenix. It's so a will they, won't they? Really? Yeah, you know. You say he's not again. a he's a steal, but I think you can say that he stole all of our hearts. Aww. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Right, uh, he's not giving them back. <laughs> and because she has to grab headphones in a second, let me go ahead and let her say hello so she can get that out of the way. Uh, hello, Ashlyn. How are you? Hey, everyone. It's Ashlyn. I play a Leonin fighter. Made you wait. You almost said cleric, <laughs> didn't you? No, maybe. No. 
Uh, I play Leonin Fighter. Her name is Callista. She Callista. Mm. doesn't roll off the tongue like too true, huh? We don't do that. <laughs> um, she is a rough and tough, uh, tries to be rough and tough, I would say, uh, kind of character who definitely has a chip on her shoulder, does not care for any of the gods whatsoever. She may have been a indenture like may have had to work for uh Erebos at one point but they have broken ties and are no longer cool friends at all she will at any chance kill a god if she has a chance to so yeah that's that's Callista Callista uh Callista's uh relationship with Erebos is left on red <laughs> all right and now uh not last but last of who is currently here hello Joy Hello. I realized I spelled my character's name wrong. I was looking at it and I was like, there's something <laughs> wrong here. The I is supposed to be an E, but I play Marifine when spelled correctly and she's a satyr bard. And I realized that um, she hasn't played a lot of music as a bard. And I'm very disappointed in myself for not allowing that to happen. <laughs> well, I was like, I picked, play, play I, I know, right now. I know. Well, I don't, <laughs> I have a, I have a automaton that is dead. <laughs> oh. So it's more like a tumatone. Yeah. <laughs> ah, hey. ah, 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 gotcha. Everyone takes psychic damage. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. And well, of course, I am Riley Silverman, your dungeon master. And I'm excited. I have a little bit of a spoopy, uh, fun session for us tonight. Um, but while we're waiting for Omega to come back, we'll go ahead and start. And we will start with where we were left off last week, which was uh, the group is leaving the arena in Akros. You have said your goodbyes to your good friend D, who is is probably already gotten herself in some more trouble since you left. We'll see how that goes. However, uh, Mara Fine, you had a moment last week that didn't really get resolved. And that is that the three Minotaurs who attacked your family when you were younger that you've been looking for mm -hmm. all this time showed up and tried to cause a little bit of chaos in the arena. Now they got a little bit distracted by the arrival of the, uh, the doom speak. Was that what it was? The, the doom wake uh, giant that appeared, but right. they got arrest. They got taken into custody by the Akroan guards. And you have now been, kind of let loose in Akros. So uh, how does how does a uh, Marafine deal with with these Minotaurs? Does she want to confront them? Does she want to talk to them? How do you feel about that? And right now they're in Frizz or in, yeah. 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 So as we've established in season one, uh, the way Akros' uh, prison system works is there's a big hole in the ground and they're in it. So they're they were just chucked down in that hole. So uh okay. so you <laughs> You uh you can kind of shout down to them or they can be brought up to you. Uh, it is your choice. But they're basically being there while they're awaiting any sort of sentencing. And by sentencing, I mean having to fight in the arena for entertainment for the city. Okay. Oh, uh, Omega is back. So before we role play that, we will say let Omega say hello and who they're playing. Hi, sorry about that. My name is Omega Jones, nice. also known as Critical Bark. Uh, I'm an active vocalist, hot mess incarnate, playing Zendar, the half Gorgon artificer wizard. That's me. Yay! All right. Back to Mara Fine. So Mara Fine, so you mm -hmm. will say that you were brought to this pit by a few of the Akroan guards. Your party is there. They are behind you. And uh, they there's a, there's a gate over the pit, so people can't climb the pit and climb right out of the gate easily. But uh, yeah, I would say it's probably about maybe two stories worth, about, tw about down. So that way if someone tries to climb and falls, it's a little bit of hazard for them. Uh, speaking of which, Critical Bar just resubscribed to the channel, so we're going to find out who gets a reroll for that. Us. <laughs> Yay! <All right>. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! All right. The players, baby. Meta game. Um, <laughs> uh, if y'all want to pay to the channel, you're more than happy to meta game. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah. I wasn't even thinking that. about it like that. I was like, oh, yeah, click the button. Oh, yeah, that does something. Us? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. could I go to the hole? Yeah. And, and then once I go to the hole, um, I, I guess I want to, want to talk to them and, and just say, uh, trying to, 
I don't think I ever established how long ago it was. <laughs> yeah, that can be that can be your call. I'm uh, to how do you, how long do you think it's been for Mara Fine? Uh, You've been looking at it for a little while, so I imagine it's probably been at least a year or so, if not more. Yeah. I'm gonna go with a solid five years. <laughs> five years, okay. yeah. A musical. So <laughs> so like a nice solid search time. Yeah, solid yeah. search. Not like, yeah. oh my gosh, I was looking for you for so long and I found you in 20 minutes. Oh, you've been uh, on Postmates this whole time. I had no idea. Uh, no. Uh, so I would just go up to the hole and I guess yell down because it's pr probably pretty deep and say, so about five years ago, I just have a question. What was your purpose? The first one looks up at you and kind of like squints a little bit. And then he elbows his buddy. And she kind of looks up at you as well. She's kind of like, she's like, what? I don't, what? And he's like, it's, it's that runt. <laughs> Remember? Remember that cottage? And the old lady? <laughs> and the one's like, I mean, there's been a lot of, there's been a lot of cottages and old ladies. I don't know. I don't know what. No, no, the satyrs. The satyrs, the musical satyrs. <laughs> and the other one's just like. You have to excuse my friends, the third one over. And he's like, we just wanted your power. We thought if we killed you and defeated you, we could take it. Turns out we couldn't. Whoops. But you, you, you weren't attacking me. You attacked everybody I knew. And so I don't understand. Did someone send you? We just, we just heard there was a family of satyrs. I live in a little cottage outside of town, and uh, we thought if we went up there and jumped in, we could find out what made them so powerful. So there was no no reason behind anything. You just decided. Yeah. That's not exactly the answer I was searching for, but I hope you have a fantastic time in the arena. And then she um, just judges. <laughs> <laughs> and it, All right. <laughs> are we with them? Yeah. Yeah, you're you're kind of standing behind her. She's kind of at the gate, and the three of you are back behind her. Well, Callista will then, like, jump on the grates and be like, and if I ever see you out again roaming, don't you dare think I won't head. I won't. I will. I... I won't hesitate to kill you. What, what do we do to you? You picked a fight with the wrong friend. All right. She slowly backs away, staring at me. <laughs> hey, roll, <laughs> make an intimidation check for me. Do I have intimidation? Oh, I do have intimidation. You gotta have intimidation. I would hope so. <laughs> 22. All right, yeah. Um, yeah, they all three, they actually look legitimately scared. They look, they look uh, for, for a bunch of thugs who find themselves tossed into cages quite a bit. Uh, they actually do seem like they might take their sweet time getting out of this particular prison because they are a little bit frightened of you. So. Mm. All life is precious. And if you're going to take it away for fun, well, then you make my job a lot easier. All right. I mean, we will not do that. My nails right. will pop. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, oh, man, that was a good pop. <laughs> Zendari just walks over closer to my fine. Those are people who hurt you or something? Yeah, they kind of took everything from me. My, my, my family, um, and I just got, I was just one second too late, and I couldn't do anything about it, and I never got answers, and now the answers are nothing. Um, Sanders comes over, too, and is just listening. Go ahead. I was just going to say that... Um, Though I don't really, you know, um, go into this aspect of her, 
Um, I am connected to the goddess of affliction. So if you want me to do something about them because they hurt you, I could. You know, I'll take you up on that offer. Do you also have any potions you can just fly? I swear to you. <laughs> uh, do you have any potions that you can, you know, douse on them or something? Um, well, I have some things uh, that are experimental. Uh, but I did, and he picks up this flask um, uh, uh, that... And it looks very familiar as what the contents do. And he goes, I picked up some acid from the lab. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll hand it to Marfine. I mean, I don't know what to do with do I just throw it's a throw flies it? of acid. Yeah, you know, what would you, let me ask you if you if you saw a pit of, of minotaurs who had killed your whole family and they were down below and you had a flask of acid in your hand, what would you do with the acid? I mean, I have ideas, but I <laughs> here's, the question. You, here's the question. Do you think Marifine, don't think about what Joy would do. No, I mean, about... Well, technically she's me, so I would <laughs> well, do she, it. She's a, char <laughs> she's a character you're playing. So <laughs> you don't have to do what you would do. You do what she would do. I know, and I feel like she wouldn't do that. That's you... okay. <laughs> and that's, that, is, that is a very valid response. And in fact... I think that your, but what does Mar, what does what does Marfine do when Zindar hands her this vial? Uh, well, she looks at it and contemplates doing it, but then realizes the repercussions of the guilt that will come across her um, later down the line isn't worth it, um, and hopefully that you know they'll get what they deserve later. I like that. And I will say this, um, Mara finds God that she follows is Krufix, the God of horizons and horizons are often the unseen or the unknown. So I believe that by choosing the uncertain future of what might happen with these Minotaurs moving forward versus the certainty the defined outcome of killing them with this acid. I believe that you are doing a very pious thing for your God. And so in Theros, that has mechanical benefits. So I believe previously we had you at a plus three piety. And I think I will move you to a plus 10, which we can talk about it more after the show. But essentially uh, that means that you can now cast the, the spell detect thoughts uh, without using material components, you can do it uh, once once per long rest. And from now on, Mara Fine, you have advantage on saving throws against being charmed. So we will, we will deal with that. We'll figure out how to make that reflect on your character sheets. It's easier for you to pull that information. But yeah, I think that you you have moved up in Krufix's eyes by doing something that would benefit your following of him. Uh, speaking of special gifts that are coming from the gods, uh, we did end last week with a one of the instruments of the gods that you're looking for. One of these these arcane these um, archon age weapons. Uh, what did I call them? Um, the uh, I have notes. I have notes. Bum ba dum bum 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 bum. Can I write that down? That was the question. Uh, oh, I, I had the artifacts of the five kings. So artifacts, we'll definitely artifacts for sure. In yeah. There. So you have one of the artifacts. I think this came in after you left uh, Omega because you had to go to bed last week. Because we sorry. Late. Yeah. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> I got fine. the magical, no, no, magical sorry, sword we of the forge. So Lysandros, why don't you go ahead and read the description of that sword of the forge for me? Oh right. Um, so. We got the Sword of the Forge last time. And the Sword of the Forge, this magic Warhammer grants a plus three to attack and damage rolls. Oh, made it's a with sword. It. Sorry, that, that might be my editing. Yeah, um, no problem. This magic Sword Hammer. Oh, wait. You, might, you know what? Uh, Unequip it and re-equip it because I changed the flavor text on it and it must not be. So I delete it and re-add it. A boop. Okay. Because, yeah. 
I, I actually went through and made sure to get rid of those Warhammer things. Uh, not a Warhammer. Boom. Turns out that we don't have a Sword of the Forge. Yeah. But then we will. You yeah. You should, it should be there. I think, I think it's needed to re, re equip it. Um, How do I? Think, I... I think Callie has to do that too with her, with her axe so it doesn't give oh, her encumbrance. Okay. She hasn't already done that. Sweet. Okay. Remove. Uh, and now I'll add another. Warhammer of the Forge. I'm just kidding. I'm searching for Sword of the Forge. Warhammer is what it wasn't. Is not there anymore? No, I, I was just joking that I was searching for a Warhammer of the Forge because oh. that's not what it is. It's Sword yeah. of the Forge. Yeah, because I, I changed it to a rapier, <laughs> and it's at, so for those those who we'll, we'll cut through this a little bit. Uh, the sword of the forge was loosely based on the artifact that's already in the Theros book. That is the hammer of Perforos. I took the hammer of Perforos, I made it into a rapier, and I changed the flavor of it a little bit. So it is made from metals that predate even uh, Perforos himself uh, mm. from the history of the creation of Theros. So that is why it is such a powerful item. It's a magic sword that grants a plus three bonus to attack and damage rolls made with it. When you hit with an attack using it, the target takes an extra 3d10 fire damage. And the fire damage affects even creatures normally immune or resistant to fire because Let's it is a go. divine fire. Yeah. Uh, while holding the sword, you have resistance to fire damage and you are immune to the exhausted condition. Uh, additionally, you have proficiency with Smith's tools and you have advantage on all ability checks made using them. Um, and while th this isn't so much for fun for Lysander, this is this this is an artifact. This is this is what's Jesus. This is, this is rules as written for except for I right. added the resistance. I, I added the uh, the fact that it it by it breaks resistance because I love that feature. Uh, while the sword is on your person, you can use it to cast one of the following spells: animate objects, heat metal, fabricate. Uh, magic weapon, mending, shatter, and uh, once you use the sword to cast that spell, it can't be cast again until the next dusk. Sweet, so that is the. Sword that the is board. a sick item. Let's I'm just gonna that is, like wake up yeah. in the morning and animate one random object and waste oh, it right off the yeah. bat. <laughs> That's why it was fun. It was fun giving Lysandros a weapon that I know he won't use for anything. <laughs> um, great. Uh, so yeah, that is your second of your artifacts of the gods. God. Sweet, um, and we saw last week firsthand how much one of those messed up that, that Doomspeak Doomswake uh, giant. So that was a fun little thing. All right. So as you're leaving Akros, you, Callie, you make a perception check for me. Perception. Perception. Uh, thirteen. Okay, you you get like a nagging sensation. You're being watched, but when you look around, you don't notice anything. We we finished everything we were doing, right? Like we don't owe anyone anything, right? I mean, Lysandros? Speak, speak for yourself. I owe tons of people a lot of things. I, I have a whole book that lists well, people I owe things. And and honestly, it took me years and years and years to get the book as long as it is. So it will be a long time before I've actually paid all of it off. But I don't think we accrued any significant new debts there. Okay. Oh, Evacerate, thank you for the raid. Hello. Hey, welcome, everybody. Raid. Thank you. Welcome. All right. Well, Marafine, Zendar, if you... uh. I don't know. I just get this feeling that something, something's here, something's watching us. So, just be careful. Um. Okay. I'm going to grab my flask back from Marfine because she didn't use it. Um. And I like stare at the the people in the uh the the cell or wherever they are for a second, and mm -hmm. before I guess put it back in my bag. Um. And I was like. Well, do we need anything else in this place, or can we go somewhere else? I mean, I think Dee and her family have things pretty well in hand. It was fun, you know, putting a show on for these people. Kind of sucks that we actually ended up getting attacked, but it all worked out for the best. We got a weapon. Yeah. We got two mm -hmm. of the how many? Five. Hey, that's a pretty good start. Eight, five. Six. 
Um, Lysandros starts, uh, like, holds out the rapier and, like, kind of flip, flicks it around a little bit. He goes, this thing's pretty nice. Hey, I like As you this. flick it around, like, little bits of flames, like, flicker off of it, like, almost like you're starting a fire with it. Like, almost like how would if you, like, ran a rapier through a fire? Nice. So Lysandros gets really caught up in that while, while you guys are talking, and it's just, like, trying to, like, write <laughs> words in... Like whipping it really quick, like like it's a sparkler on Fourth of July. Okay, yes. take inspiration. Oh my god, <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah. Um, um. Then where should we go next? We should go to another place, I assume, that has um, one of these artifacts. Well, we just got to find more of those kings, right? I mean, we found the King of Might, and. Uh, what was the the king of glory, which was D and her family? We found the king of glory, so there's three kings left out there somewhere. I mean, if we just go out and start, you know, looking for kings, how hard could it be? You yeah. can barely throw a rock without hitting a king here in Theros. So the kings that you have left to find are the king of pride, the free king, and the king underground. The free king and the king underground. King of yeah. pride, free king, king. Thank you. Um, I. Literally have no idea where to look to start for those. Not really about kingly people. And when you say that, Callie, you hear a familiar voice from behind you. And you now realize this is probably who you thought was watching you. You hear a voice of a female Leonin no. say... I think I have an idea of where you can go next. Callie's going to like stiffen for a moment and then she's going to slowly turn her head to see the face that she knows is going to be there, but she's hoping isn't. And you turn and you are face to face with the sorceress that you know of as Seza, the Leon and sorceress, your sometimes rival your dead sister's ex-fiance. Well, she was current fiance when she, anyway. Um, someone you hey, faced down several rip. times. Yeah. And she's wearing, you know, a somewhat ornate robe. Uh, you recognize this robe as, it's not the same like outfit she was wearing when she was serving the Gorgon. And it's not what she was wearing when she chased you down and attacked you. Um, it is a more ornate, it is the robes that are worn by members of your pride when they are serving in the kind of like magical, like class aspect of it. Like the, you know, right. not priests, not priestesses per se, because there's not, we don't follow gods, but like people who run the rituals mm -hmm. and practice, practice magic uh, in a iconoclastic way. And you can see that it has the mark of the swift claws on it in a very ornate kind of way oh it looks like you've cleaned up are you uh back with the pride now why don't actually hold that thought why don't we find a different place to be this place is not the place to have any talks with you sure where would you like to go she seems calmer than last she time does. you saw her last time you saw her she wanted to kill you last two times that you saw her she was coming after you um she seems stoic. Hmm. Well, Lysandros, you remember Seza? Uh, Lysandros, uh, who's been just flicking the sword in the air, just like <laughs> trying to like get the speed right, turns around and goes, ah, ah, no, okay, uh, we're ready for you this time. <laughs> We've got weapons. You see her kind of like tough facade break for a half second when you had the flaming sword go towards her. She kind of flinches and then recomposes herself. And uh, I'm... go ahead, Seza. Who are your other friends? Is this a bad person? The, this Zendar and Marvine, this is Seza. This is my would have been my sister-in-law. She uh, friends. Hmm? I said it would have been a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, it would have. Um, she uh, 
can't decide if she wants to kill me or be miserable the rest of her life. So here she is again. What do you bring us this time? I've come to bring you home. Pride. Uh... No, no, seriously. What do you, what do you want? It's, it's, it's time, Callista. It's time for you to come home. Uh, why? Xanthi summons you. That's your mother. Yes, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, I don't think looking, you were looking at your notes. I wanted to make sure. Yeah, I was like, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> Uh, well, as sorry, I, I should, I should earlier, have given you, I should have given you a longer second. I'm sorry. Okay. That was... <laughs> well, as I just mentioned, we have weapons, so you can't make her go anywhere. <laughs> I'm not forcing her to go anywhere. I'm inviting her to come home. Like, officially. I don't believe that I stuttered. You get the sense she still doesn't like you very much. She's not trying to kill <laughs> oh, yeah. you, but she doesn't like you now. And I don't get the vibe that she's like, look, we've dealt with a lot of people trying to hurt the... First of all, first of all, ever since we've met Lysandros and Callista, somebody's <laughs> trying to hurt them. So, yeah. or somebody don't like them. So he's used to that at this point. However, does it seem like this person right now is interested in hurting them? Make an insight check. Guidance. <laughs> yeah. Explain to me, just uh, curiosity for flavor, what does it look like when Zindar casts guidance on himself or somebody else? Um, whenever he casts guidance on himself, you see his eyes flash ever so slightly. And there is, he he's very touchy. And though he doesn't really touch himself, I'm not going to say that out loud. Though he doesn't <laughs> allow his <laughs> hands to touch his body a lot. Uh, as I said before, there's like a natural musk that kind of gets exudes from him. Okay. Um, and every now and then he just kind of gets breathes that in. Um, because it's a little more than just a natural musk. Um, but uh yeah. What is that? No, what about that's a D6, that's a D4. Um uh, no. That's a seven. Okay, with a seven. She is very stoic. Um, you definitely, it's very hard to read her emotions. Mm -hmm. um, the emotions that you do get are are fairly hostile towards Callista, but in a way that doesn't necessarily, you don't really get a read that she's planning on hurting her. Um, you just get a read that like, there's a lot of, that's about, about most you'll get is that it doesn't feel threatening as much as just a like a detestation. Mm. I see. Um, okay. Uh, cool. Yeah, he just watches. Okay. All right. Well, if if my mom truly wants me to come back and is a, like on the official level allowing this, is everything okay? No. You are needed figures okay um and and do we i'm sorry did you say you we had a god weapon you know about a god weapon your mother is the king of a pride oh, oh. the rumors the rumors have gotten around that that makes a lot of sense now that you say it that's see that this is why you cast spells and I punch things. Yes, I agree. Lysandros leans into Callie and is like, "Do you think the word got around because we went from town to town, openly telling people exactly what we were looking for?" Yeah, that might have that. Yep, that that would probably do it. I'm gonna roll oh, to hey. see if she heard that. <laughs> how how quiet were you being when you said that? Not all that quiet. Okay. Um, I think she says, um, I think she hears you and she says. It was like says, a stage whisper. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's like Homer going, I think he's talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that, yeah, she, she hears you say that. I'm going to pull the character sheet for her in case I need it. Um, 
but uh, yeah, so she pauses and she says, well, the whole of Theros knows that the Archons are back and that there are four heroes trying to stop them. So yeah, the word is out a little bit. See, one more time, this is a point towards the fact that subtlety is overrated. Sure. Okay. Well, if we come back, if I come back, can my my friends, my acquaintances come with me? Yes. Great, because I wasn't actually asking they were going to come anyways, but just wanted to make sure that there's nothing funny planned. I had never intended not to invite them. As I said, the exploits of the four heroes trying to save Theros have gotten around. You know, Callie, things don't have to be this difficult. There are, what's difficult here? I, I'm in exile, minding my own business, doing my own things, and the pride is able to be themselves and do their prideful things. What's difficult? She seems annoyed, and she... Because we need to find a, a safe space that is not heavily trafficked. Hmm. Anyone got any ideas? A non-heavily um, trafficked space to talk? To go? Like, what... I'm trying to understand exactly, like, what is so important that we can't discuss before going. It's not a matter of discussing anything. I'm going to cast a spell, and I don't want to grab random people when I do it. Your sound, your, your tone, it sounds very pointed. Yeah, I feel I'm, like look, there's I'm, something off here. Uh, make an insight check. Dang it. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> well, you should, hopefully with your charisma, you might be wrong. Oh, that's perception, never mind. Yeah, no, insight is... Whoopsie. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, is it? You are struggling. Uh, you are struggling I right know now. Why. Just... I have it, but okay, I don't one. have my. Do you see those rules? Hang yes. On, let me, let me yes. The first one was a 17. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 17 is good. I kept getting an error saying board not found, and that's because um, I just didn't have the other thing up. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You're trying, was... trying to play over to. Yeah, you're probably yeah. doing a virtual okay. thing. Okay, um, let me just, I have, actually, I have a character sheet in the campaign so I can see things. Yeah, I don't have it open either, so I can't see your... Yeah, I was like, wait, am I getting an error? Is it happening? <laughs> Hang on one second. Um... Yeah, so you got a 17. With a 17, I will say that you're, you got a pretty good read on her. Mm -hmm. You've met people like this before. She is... She's not being like threatening. She's not really hiding anything. She's just easily annoyed and maybe has a little bit of like ideas about what her like what her station is per se and maybe feels like you could tell she does not like Callie and that she doesn't really know like why Callie is making things so hard for her and that is a big thing that's happening here is that she is she's like ready to move on and she's mad that she's not getting what she wants and she's also like maybe feeling a little bit uh sorry i have a ice machine behind me she's maybe feeling a little bit like she's not getting the respect that she deserves and she also feels like she it's beneath her to be doing a fetch quest to find callie so you don't you don't get that she's per se like angry or you don't get that she's threatening you or that she's planning on anything or that she's lying. You just get this kind of arrogance about her and this seething, like there's, there is, there is beef here. So imagine if like you met a friend of yours and 
some like high school rival that like had like some like some like some stuff went down showed up and needed them for something and like had to like swallow that anger a little bit that's what's happening here okay um uh I guess I I look to Callie and I say, is it is this normal for her, or do you think that this is a trap? It, this is pretty on par. This is this is Seza. Okay, um, I want to make sure if we're gonna get magically teleported to another place that we understand what's happening. Yeah. I mean, listen, before you go in there, I'll I'll let you know that I am not liked where I'm from. Um, I I agreed to leave for what I thought was forever. And uh, now we're here. So there's a lot of people that back home probably would be happy to see me dead. And uh I don't think we should um, um, uh, manifest that. Um, we're just going to say you won't die. I'm a healer. That's what I do. Yeah, you've got us with you. And oh. it's become clear that they need you. So, really, you're holding all the cards. It's true. I guess it's true. Thanks, everyone. I still have acid too. <laughs> Great. Um, but set this is Seza, she's being real. We don't like each other, and I don't think we ever will at this point, but I don't think she's going to harm any of us, especially you. Hmm. If I wanted to kill you all, I would have done so already. I don't know you, but don't threaten me. I'm not threatening you. I'm simply stating a fact of how things are. I don't want to kill you, so I have not. I'm quite intellectual, and that's not a fact. That's an opinion stated by someone who has the magical ability to do things. But I also have a magical ability to do things on a more mundane side, and it would not be as easy as you think. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> oh. Fair enough. Maybe we could duel at some point. Oh, all right. I, I, I'm feeling a lot of tension here, and I tend to uh, avoid tension by drinking and partying most of the time, but that's not an option right this moment. So if we need this privacy for your spell, uh, how much space do you need? Zendar reaches into his bag and brings out a flask of red wine that he had from episode one. <laughs> oh, 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 and hands oh, it to oh, Lysandros. Oh Lysandros, not missing a beat, grabs it and is like, yeah. you are the best. You are <laughs> the best. Pops it and drinks it. Inspiration, because what a callback. I remember you saying that. That is, that is phenomenal. You were waiting. Is, uh, I literally have a bag of holding with everything that I take. <laughs> this uh, is great. That is wonderful. I Yeah, cheers to you for that. We don't have a, a toast right now, so I am just to you. That was funny. I will empty that was glass, glorious. Man. Oh, my gosh. Um, so, uh, how much privacy do we need? I just need a room. I need 10 feet by 10 feet. You know what? I think I can help you. I just don't want pedestrians walking by and walking into my teleportation spell. So I know I just got the, the sword of the forge, but am I already attuned with it? Yeah, I'll we'll say you are. So is there like a, a, a stone or a patch of trees around anywhere? Um, yeah, I, this happened as you were already heading out of town. So there are, there are passersby, like you're on a public road, but there are definitely like rocks and stuff on the, on the side of a path. Okay. Well, uh, then Lysandros goes off actually to just a, a patch of dirt and rocks and stuff and just goes 10 by 10, eh? I feel like, yeah, let's give this a try. And he sort of, uh, sketches out in the air like a quick little blueprint uh with the sword and as he does it the like trail of fire kind of happens and when he finishes i want to cast fabricate 
and oh. mold the rocks into a 10 by 10, just like small shelter. All right. With my yeah. uh, with my magic sword. Yeah. So that usage of that is gone for the day, but you've got that. <laughs> Zindar and, uh, is just going to look at this and go, pull open his book, which is literally a book of recipes and formulas <laughs> for building magic out of the mundane. And he just like writes, how can Lysandros do this now? <laughs> Period. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, speaking, of which, it. speaking of which, Zindar, I did I did say last week, I don't know if you caught this information, but I because you had asked for two new spells as part of what you learned from the the Minotaurs. Mm -hmm. Uh you also get one more new spell that you learned from the Acroans as a thanks for doing the uh the combat in the pit. Thank so you, you can add that. three new spells of your choice Thank you. uh, to your spell book for the levels that are appropriate to you. Uh great. Mm -hmm. Just let me know what you choose and kind of give me an idea of how he learns them and what he does with them and stuff like that. For sure. So, um right. so Lysandros like paints out the blueprints like in front of him and then where uh where he like painted it like the image uh, the the stone forms and melds itself into like a, a little hut basically there and he just turns around and goes i think i'm getting the hang of this thing tosses the sword up it does a couple flips and he catches it in his hand and you see a bunch of people like agog and like amazed and then kind of like running up and kind of crowding around this hut that you just made and they're all <laughs> touching it and putting their hands on it and and drawing a lot of attention to it uh, Lysandros goes to over the door and uh, quickly, with the tip of his sword, signs Lysandros' place at the top and underlines it. <laughs> All right. So you're going to get a tax bill from the city of Ekros for property tax. Uh, so yeah, uh, it says it goes, so does this work then? Can we open the door and just go on in? I mean, it should work. Great. So she goes in and she waits for you all to join her. He'll walk in. Yep. Uh, all right, you go in, and she uh, says, everyone put your hand on the person next to you. So she kind of creates like a circle of people. Uh, everyone has to fit within a 10-foot queue. So everyone kind of squeeze together a little bit. And Lysandra she... Goes, Sorry about the place. Just moved in. Really haven't had time to, you know, like fix it up or anything like that. <laughs> okay. I will right. I will hold on to Mara Fine. And go. I, okay. My hand you you begin to uh, sense the smell of she's kind of whispering to herself she's doing an incantation and you suddenly smell rotted grass like grass that has been decaying a little bit and blighted as you appear in a permanent uh, teleportation circle that exists on the land of the Swift Claws pride. Callie, it's instantaneous travel. You kind of hear like a sound as you go and you're there, but you are not prepared. Fracture roll, thanks to the raid. You are not prepared hey, welcome everybody. for what you see when you get there because the once lush and green and vibrant plains of the Swift Claw lands have been blighted the grass is dying the crops are are rotted you see livestock and hunt like gathered hunted animals who are on the ground rotted and decaying and some that are still alive but are suffering from some level of disease and and toxin what happened your sister happened and she takes you to kind of the leadership circle, the, the rock where your mother leads the community. And you see around her there and people are struggling. People are trying to like protect, like collect what they can of what's salvageable of what's left of, of these blighted properties and you come to the gathering space of the leaders of the community which you know is a council of 
of the women, uh, the female uh, Leonin, and they are the leaders. There are a few male Leonin that are around that are that are guards or that are you know courtiers and things like that, including your father, uh, uh, Nick Firos, who averts his gaze and doesn't look at you. What's his name? And, uh, Nick Faros. Okay. <laughs> I heard Nick Fury, and I was I like, did too. <laughs> "Oh my god!" I, I was like, too. "Hold on, what?" <laughs> you know what? Yeah. Uh, this, no. this, is, this, is, this is voice uh, it, from now on. Just imagine this character's voice by Samuel L. Jackson. All right. Yeah. Uh, and so he has an iPad. Get an iPad. Yeah. He averts his one eye from you. Um, he, yeah, you know what? He can only has one eye now. I don't. I don't even care. Um, yes. And uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> And he has dark fur like he's wearing a black leather coat. Anyway, um, so um, he sees you and he looks away from you. But it's, it's not even so much. Make it, make an insight check for me, Callie. Mm. Yeah. Let's see. Insight. That is a four. Okay. Do you want to use a reroll? <laughs> um, probably. No. I was going to say probably not this early. All right. Um, so... You can't really get a read on why he, you can't really tell if he's still angry at you or if he's turning away in some sort of shame. You can't quite tell. He just seems he seems a little bit broken. And there's like a little bit if you if you were able to get a look at him, like you kind of catch a quick glimpse of his good eye. And you think for a second, but you can't see it long enough. He turns away from you before you get a chance to get a look at it. You think there's like redness, like crying, like tears, which is rare to see in your father's face. Yeah. And as, as he turns away from you, the council of the leadership uh, turn towards you and standing in the center of them is your mother, uh, Queen Xanthi of the Swift Claws. Hello. Hello, my, my child. And she comes up to you and she pauses for a second and she makes eye contact with you. And then she throws her arms around you for a hug. I think Calista's just going to freeze in that moment because she like she hasn't been here in like years. Yeah. And I think she like while well, she knows that like her and her mom were on the up and up on what went down like it's still like kind of a shell shock to her. And she's just kind of like, what are you doing? All these people can see you. Um, and yeah, she's just going to like stand there wide eyed while she hugs her. Yeah. And she lets you go. And she says, this is my daughter, Callista of the Swift Claws. She has renounced her fealty to Erebos. And her sins have been washed away. She is my daughter. And any disrespect shown to her will be as of disrespect onto me. Do I make myself clear? And all the other Leonin around her um, bang their spears on the ground and and do a huh! and they all are in agreement. You recognize this as affirmation. You recognize this as a obeyance of their queen. I wish I wish it was better times for you to return to the credence of the Swift Claws, but we are in a dire circumstance. Yeah, me too. I. I would waste time wondering what happened, but like, what just, what do you need? What, what's going on? A infestation of creatures has found their way here. Um, pass the. The what? I might be mispronouncing it. This is a Magic the Gathering card. You're um, good. I think it's okay. Catoblopas. So I think it's close. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah it's C A T O B L E P A S. So this was up. a this was a card that was drawn 
by uh, thank you, Vampire Fifty Four, for the donation because this card oh. is happening directly because of the drawing from the. Yeah, that's gnarly. Yeah, um, and she motions off into the distance, and you can see a couple that have been killed by the hunters. They are these massive creatures that have almost uh, the art is off of a Magic the Gathering card, but they are. Um, almost like a wildebeest, I think is the way to kind of think of it. Or not a wildebeest, like a, almost like a hyena, but like a massive hyena that has a big shock of like thick, gnarly, mangled hair on its back, which kind of goes up into almost like an arch way, almost like you would see like on a boar or, or such. And this really nasty, gnarly tail. It has these stripes that almost kind of meet up in points on the top of it. And its face looks like a skull. And you can tell based on how it's laying that it was its breath that when expended caused this blight that spread across the land. So how how did these get here? Aren't these are these they're not from our plane? Are they the, are they, did Erebos do this? Is this Erebos's doing? No, this is your sister's doing. My, isn't, I'm sorry. She's, I, mom, you know, she's, she's dead. Right? Like. I thought you were smarter. Ooh. Sorry, that was cruel of me. Um, wow! You. You were in service to a god who hires you for the only task of defeating the undead. And yet you speak in shock at the very idea that your sister did not rest in peace. I'm sorry that my tone was cruel. I apologize. It has been a very trying few days. And that's, if you pick up on that, she is saying that this blight has only happened in the last couple of days. This is not months. This is not, it, this looks like years of blight and damage. It has only been days. All right, well. Has any, oh, rate. Right. Um, has any of us hey, welcome to hey. today? Let's go. Thanks, Lore Explorers. Thanks for the raid. Oh, uh, maybe more than that. Uh, for, fourth raid. Anyway, um, has any of us, have any of us ever heard of a, 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 a Kato be, a be, a be Pass? Um, I think you probably have. These are not, like, completely, like, unheard of creatures. Okay. Um, um, they are part of the lore of the world. So I think you especially, Zindar, I think I'll let you make a nature check at advantage because you are you have studied the arcane. So you probably would have heard of monsters that are Yeah, when you said blight, I was like, ooh, is it necrotic or is it like a a, a, a natural thing? Things it was definitely necrotic. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me see if there's like if there's D D stats for this creature, because I just know the, the we can D &D. Oh, wow. Double 19s. Uh, that's 23. Yeah, you definitely know what this is. Yeah, you know this creature. Um, it is, I guess, I think it's, I think it's beyond a uh, Daros thing. That's, that's from Volo's Guide to Monsters, actually. Okay. So, yeah, it is, it, is, uh, it is a creature that you know of that... Um, Usually live in swamp lands, but I think I think I'm gonna say that in Theros, they are they are definitely creatures that come from. Oh, thank you, T Boys, for the gift to the channel. That was a that was hey. a uh, gift from the coffee account. We don't get a lot of those typically. Oh, um, thank you. The show. So thank you, Tyler. Which also I believe Tyler means you get to do a toast. So that is uh, the mm -hmm. Mount Clem Yeah, thank you, Tyler. Um, oh, they gave it to somebody else. Oh, they gifted a sub. Oh, I see. They gifted another sub. Oh, nice. Okay, I thought I thought you did. Yeah. So the person they gifted the sub to gets to pick a, who gets the reroll, but Tyler gets to do a toast. 
<laughs> what if it was if they gave us money, we got to pick what we said? All I know is I smell toast. Just like all the time. I smell toast. Is that a problem? I smell toast. Um, okay. Uh, all right. So, cool. So, Tyler, when you, when you want to put in your toast, let Dom know and he'll he'll convey it to us. I believe that's how that would work. Um, great. Um, Kelly, you're, are you okay? Ashlyn? Yeah. Cameras were acting weird, but we're good. Okay. Hello? Yeah. You're a little bit delayed on my end, but I think it might be more picture than audio, so... We could just say I, it's like a special effect of some sort. I think she might have frozen again. Uh, Ashley, can you talk? Oh, can you hear me? Oh, oh no. no. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> I, okay. Um, if this keeps happening, we'll do what we did last week with Danielle, just, and we'll have you put your picture up and not use camera. Do you want that I just come back? Yeah, why don't you try that? We'll do a little quick. Uh, okay, you're fine. It just happened all of a sudden, so maybe something just, just happened. Yeah, maybe a connection thing or something. Okay. Sorry, everyone. All right. Yeah, I, I want everyone and everyone who's watching the show while, while Ashlyn right. is reloading to know that there's been a lot of conversation about candy in our private chat for players <laughs> and GM. And as someone who does not have any candy at her house right now, I'm feeling very left out. I, so, I didn't know it existed. Yeah. <laughs> so now I need it. I oh need it in my life. Oh, I like, I. I I Back might have a studio. Like this wouldn't have been a problem. I know. I <laughs> I'm always like stuck the studio with lots of candy. Like I'm I that know, person I, that uh... likes candy corn, and I love sour candy. So I'm like, what? They yeah, had a baby? Yeah, <laughs> like, wait, what? Is... <laughs> Does it taste uh, like candy corn? Or it just tastes like like sour candy. Two things. Uh, oh, never mind. I guess I jinxed it. Um, it <laughs> tastes like a gummy worm, but it's candy corn consistency. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, I, I, I ordered it back on Amazon. Oh. Bless. That was yeah. quick. Look, when I see yeah. something, I want it, okay? Okay, fair enough. It's that okay, one um, left, I have to go. Um, can I ask something, just uh, because I don't sure. remember necessarily what I know in character. Um, Ashlyn, it was revealed to us at some point that you... Uh, your yes. sister, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, it was revealed. I did explain to you and Dean. Oh, okay. So, so we apparently. know the 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 fraughtness of that relationship and everything that comes with it. Yeah. So, um, I don't think Lysandros. Uh, are if I know. Yeah, yeah, we don't know at all. We don't know right. it at all. Yeah, but you do. <laughs> Lysandros is about to inform them. Ah, <laughs> great. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, yeah. Lysandros, hearing what's going on a little bit, kind of pulls him off the side and goes, okay, uh, I'm going to give you a quick lowdown on uh, some of the uh, very complicated cat politics that are going on here between uh, Callie and her family. Uh, because I have a feeling this could get very awkward. You see, uh, that person we met who didn't try and kill us, which surprised me, uh, was engaged to Callie's sister, who uh, Callie had to... Uh, she she had to kill. Uh, I, the, the details are a little fuzzy for me, exactly when that happened. But uh, basically, she had to do it. And there was a falling out and hence leaving and, and the stuff with Erebos and, and things like that going on. And now it sounds like he's back and they've decided they have to get the one person who killed her in life to kill her again. <laughs> <laughs> but I would recommend not saying this to Callie because she has less of a sense of humor about mortality than I do. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's the situation, and, uh, I don't know, tread lightly. Lee and Inner are, uh, big into getting angry about things, and, and, and I've seen Callie hurt people, and she's very good at it. Okay, that was a lot of information, and I'll hold that to my heart. So what do you want us to do? I once. Sorry, that was very mean. Sorry. Um, mm, I apologize. I shouldn't just butt in. Uh, we, we were just standing here and we were confused. No, it's fair. I Things went a little bit haywire there for a second. I'm sorry. I, I insulted my daughter and I, I'm recovering from that. I'm sorry. Um, there is a cave nearby where your sister is. 
and she has called for you many times. And I believe she will not be satisfied until you face her. Can't, can't you get someone else? She calls to you. Yeah, but I don't know, like, just why is she? I don't know. I, I need to think about this. Can, yeah, I just, I need, I need a moment. Of course, take, take the time that you need, I understand. And I, I want you to know that your exile is over regardless of what you choose. I'm sorry that it took me this long to reach out for you. Sometimes it's easier to not say things than it is to connect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's all good, Mom. She like kind of like pats her on the shoulder and walks off because she's she's got a lot to think about. Mm -hmm. For sure. Like walks to the group, our friends. <laughs> yeah, she and she gives you space. She and she nods to the kind of like the pack, the pride, and the the guards, the the women that are the other leaders tend to disperse and they head off. And they all have things they need to take care of. They all have blighted things they're trying to protect. So they uh, they give you the space you need. So right now it is just your mother and your father who are still at the rock, but they're not standing with you. They're giving you space to, to speak. And uh, Seza, who is nearby as well, but also giving you space. Um, Zendar definitely, I mean, before he spoke up, he was watching what was going on. Um, and when Callista comes over, he... Uh... Um. Well, I don't know how helpful this is going to be, but um, I don't know my mom at all and don't even know what they look like. Uh, but I know my dad and he would only call me over to, because he's like, you know, he's really smart. He taught me everything I know. And he would only call me over if um, something was like really important or he was trying to teach me something. But since I don't need to be taught much, that's, well, I, I was learning, but I don't need to be taught as much now. So if he calls me now, it's probably because he needs something. So probably the same as here. I don't think she would call you unless it was like very, very, very important. Because she's like a queen and all and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I, I get that. It's just, I don't, Kelly. No. Yeah. Look, you've hunted, returned for a long time. And I mean, sure, you're not doing it professionally anymore, but you remember they're, they're, they're not the same people they were when they're alive. They're, they're, they're versions of themselves. You can't think about this as being the the the, the same person who was your sister. This, it, 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 this is something different. Would your sister have done this to your home? Because if the answer is no, then then it's probably not really the same person. But if the answer is yes, then I mean, even if it's your sister, they need to be dealt with. Look, I, I, I get it. These sort of relationships are complicated. You know, my brother almost destroyed the entire plane at one point. Sure, I, I didn't know he was my brother at the time, but yeah, there's complicated re, like relationships that happen in that whole, in that sort of situation. But no matter how much you cared about somebody or, or what they had going on, sometimes people change. 
And, and you can't keep looking at them like they're the same person after they do things that, that change everything. Yeah. You're, yeah, you're right, Lysandros. You're right. I just, I don't, I don't know. I just, I can't, I can't, I don't want to see her again. I don't, even if she's not there, I don't want to, I, I can't see her and do that again. Then the part you probably don't want to hear. What if you don't want to do that, but she does? It sounds like within, what did she say, like a day or so? And this place is already like decayed by a lot. Every day that she is obviously waiting for you, which sucks, I get that. But every day she's waiting for you and you don't come, that's more time she's probably going to make this place worse. And I'm not trying to put a big burden on your shoulders, but I think that's what has fallen upon you. And, but come on. you got I mean, three people who can back you up. Yeah, we've traveled with you long enough to know that you're a strong, scary badass. You can handle this. I don't know, like when she, when she was, when I had to, when I had to kill her the first time, I had to have air. I had to rely on a god. I had to have Erebos help me. I couldn't kill her after whatever she took from Farika. She was like unstoppable. Wait, what? Yeah, she got she got involved with Farika and some disciples and they had her try this potion and she freaked out she she was she she became unbelievably powerful she couldn't die i like she was practically immortal well I, then how bad could it be this time right well then let's flip this for a profit because All right, I'm if listening. she was not <laughs> actual, there is a, hold on, there is, oh, you lucky, oh, you lucky, oh, you lucky. I thought I had something and I don't. Um, <laughs> no, um, no, that's a lie. Yeah, I do. Uh, because I have a a certain tool that allows me to cast a random cantrip for the next eight hours, uh, and there is a a scaly hand that comes from him and just like pushes your face back as I cast May Chan and just push you back. Um, and I say to uh, Callie, um, if she's a disciple of. Farika, though I am also a servant of Farika, I might be able to counteract anything she can do. Devil's Luck Gaming, thanks for the raid. Hey, thanks, everybody. And I also have stuff that can help you. Nothing that's going to make you, like, stay alive forever and super powerful. I don't have that magic. But I do have stuff that can help. If you if you think listen, if you think that we stand any sort of a chance against whatever this undead form of her is, then then sure, like let's just do it and get it over with. Well, before we do anything, and this is actually one of the spells that I learned and I studied over and I started working on some things. Um I reach into my pouch and I get a very small, long cylindrical um, 
like a like a like a like a tube um and it has a cork in it and there is a a clear liquid but every now and then it seems to flash with gold and silver um and i look at it and kind of like shake it around and you see those colors kind of coalesce inside and i hand it to you Callie. and i say i've been working on something since you're like really strong and um it's probably nice if you can get the um, the jump on people and i learned this actually from some folk back where we just were um uh because i guess it's better to be faster or up first in in the arena um so it might help you now and it'll last for a while do do, do i just oh you you just yeah you just drink it it should if i did it correctly it should taste like maybe like something sweet with like a a a like a jolt of electricity, like like very small jolt. It won't hurt you. It's not like a like a kick. She's gonna sniff it. <laughs> All right, I'm I'm trusting. I'm tr I'm trust. I'm trusting you. It should work. Um, I just cast I, through this um, potion. I have cast Gift of Alacrity. Uh, you can add one d eight to your initiative. Your next Ooh. initiative. Oh, thank God. For the next four. No, sorry, not your next. For the next eight hours, you can add a one d eight to your initiative. Oh. Ooh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean to roll initiative there, but uh... <laughs> well, now we're in combat. Let's go. <laughs> mm. All right. Lysandros, who was pushed away by the mage hand, kind of from over at the side, sort of goes, snaps his fingers, and uh, you don't see anything, but uh, in Zindar's ear, he feels what seems like a somewhat wet finger going into his ear and just sort of spinning around a little bit. <laughs> oh! We already have inspiration, so I can't give it to you again, but. <laughs> what? That's funny. I like flick my hand and there's a firebolt <laughs> in my hand. And I say, but you can't do this, so be careful. Oh, can't I? He flicks his hand and there's a firebolt in his hand. If it's an illusion. An, if you spend an action to verify it, then you can be sure that it's an illusion. But otherwise, I've, wait, I've been with you for the past how many days now? I know the tricks that you try to do. One Give me my flashback. And I, I, I'm <laughs> <laughs> well, Mine is never to give Lysandros drinks. <laughs> You're right. He did give me drinks. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, um, so um, we will go whenever you want us to go. I'll, I'll leave that up to. I'll leave that up to the pride whenever I'm I'm sure you have a plan and she'll turn back over towards her parents. I'm sure you have a plan for all this. How like a plan how exactly? I don't uh I don't know. Are you going to is do we have to worry about any of the kelpopod things? Caltiped. Um, I believe that our hunters can handle those. It's just she keeps making more of them or summoning more of them or whatever. But I don't think that they're that much of a threat. We can deal with them. Um, if you would not mind, um, it's going to sound very strange, um, but um, if we finish this and you know things are better. Um, however, that looks. Um, would you mind uh, having some of your hunters? Um, and I pull out a a vial, um, c collecting um, some of uh, I don't know, maybe like the stuff they're like 
causing the blight to happen with? I just want to study like how it works. Well, it it feels more like a energy than a liquid, but if we are able to bottle it somehow, we will try. Or or then instead, if there's some of the, the blighted plants or the grass or something, just put some of that in, in there and I can study the energy that is upon the plants. Oh, okay. Yes, we will. We will try our best to do that. Th thank you. Well, I would offer to show you around my home, but it's kind of in shambles right now. So we should probably just get this over with. It was, it was very beautiful. Yeah. Well, your dark past isn't getting confront itself. You ready to do this? Yeah, let's uh let's go kill the unkillable. Okay. Um she well, I think Seza leads you over to a cave. Um it is a cave that you are familiar with. It is um the best, I, the best thing I can use as an example is like the Elephant Graveyard in The Lion King. It's very much a, it's a place that as children, you would often dare, your, dare yourselves to go to. Um, it is definitely a place where animals in the area have historically gone to die um, or to like be towards the end of their, their, their life cycles. And yeah, it was, it's very much the kind of place that young Leonin in the pride would kind of shove each other into and prank each other with. Um, but you know, you know that it's also kind of got a lot of reverence to it. And there is definitely a sense that there is some sort of great power within it. I just want to say really quickly that I love that this, this um, atmosphere of this pride, though it very much does have a Lion King vibe. It also has a Lion King vibe with a Wonder Woman twist. <laughs> Mm. So it's less like I don't know. I guess I like I like where it's at. Continue. I'll just think about that. Well, the Leonid are kind of loosely based on the Furies, so they kind of make sense. Like the Furies are the Amazons. Yeah, so that kind of. Yeah. I like that. Thank you. Loosely based on the the Furies. I mean the Furies. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Those ones. Yeah. They're played by Furries. Um, <laughs> all right. So yeah. Um, T leads you over to it. And Seza looks like she's afraid to go in the cave herself. She feels that she's hesitant. Um, and probably for the same reasons you are. I think that she is feeling that she doesn't want to face this version of, of uh, Diadamia. Diadamia. Hey, hey uh, really quickly, uh, out of character, I'm asking this just because I don't want to put something in your hands if it's not what you're prepared for. But does Seza have like a character sheet? Uh, I'm just using, I, I'm kind of using a modified version of an Archmage sheet. Okay. Then I say, uh, with that, was, I, I didn't want to like say something without something actually being the thing. Um, I will reach into my pouch and reach into the little contraption I have two different vials in, and I pull out one. And I say, drink this. It will help you. Um, okay. Y you have a lot of magic in your... I don't know how you do yours. A lot of my magic comes from the things I create. Okay. She's going to do an insight check. Okay. She got six. I have three rerolls. I need one of them. <laughs> she got 12. What does she get with a 12? With the 12, you can tell that he is giving you something that he believes would be useful. Okay. Um, she is like, well, I do like magic, and she drinks it. Lysandros will remember this because you just drunk the boldness elixir. Hey. Uh, um, so mechanically, they're going to be able to add a D4 to any attack roll and saving that they make within the next minute. Uh, or I, I, I would have said, well, drink this, drink this. If you feel that you're you're going to be too scared to go inside, so whenever they drink that, um, they'll have that for the okay. next minute. But specifically, it's going to make them a little bold. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> just I because. Think right. I think that she gets essentially what what almost like when someone has liquid courage. Yeah, like she gets she takes like a little she takes it and she kind of just like ah, 
um, and like hands you back the flask with a with a with a directness as if she was slamming down a shot glass that you gave her. Mm -hmm. And she goes, All right, let's do this. All right. If she's if she's a powerful major, Zendar wants her in there. <laughs> with the, no, you do. Don't yeah. be scared. Get in here. Fireballed yeah. us last season. It was pretty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, and I and I up I upped her character sheet from last time. So. Oh, yeah. At least she's I on think, our side this time. Hopefully. Yeah. Or is she? I know. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, okay. Do so you go in the cave? Uh, I think Callie's gonna take a big breath. All right, let's do this. As you enter the cave, you are met with a chill in the air and it feels unnatural chill. It doesn't feel like just a breeze or a cold cavern. It feels like something has drained heat or energy from the space. And it's a little bit foggy and misty as you go in and you see this hint of a glow off in the distance. And as you walk, Callie, you feel the mist around you start to shape and form. And the rest of you see it too. It's not something just happening just for Callie, but it is this ghost of a memory. You remember yourself and your sister standing on the edge of the pride lands with your father one of the leaders of the hunters this is before your mother ascended to the throne but your family was very respected very powerful and you noticed off in the distance a group of human clerics who were in danger and you asked your father why you weren't helping them and your father told you very coldly that it was not theirs to interfere with the ways of the gods and it was best to steer clear of them. And you didn't understand that at the time, if I recall correctly. Yeah. It was painful for you. And your sister, who you will say you called her Dia for short, Dia also pushed back against your father, but he would not hear it. And he led you away from the assault. Then you see the smoke form again. And it's the next morning. And you dared each other. And it's you, your younger sister, and Ceza as cubs. Daring each other to explore where the battle had been. And there is no more fighting. There is no more conquest, but there are bodies. And you have never really shaken the carnage and the death and the decay that had taken form on that ground after that battle that you knew that your people could have prevented or protected from, but turned away from. And that fades away. How does Callie feel about that memory? What is what is Callie's thoughts now versus how she remembers them as a child? I think Callie right now, when she sees that, she's definitely, she's thinking to herself, like, she just thinks of how she, her dad was right. She shouldn't have meddled with the gods, shouldn't have, shouldn't have gotten involved in their affairs. And, uh, She's she's kind of blaming herself right now for the situation they're in. Um, she blames herself for going to Erebos. She she blames uh, Dia's current predicament of undeadness on on her choices, and uh, she's she's pretty mad and upset by that realization as well. Let me ask you a question. Does, did Callie ever speak to Dia about that day and about how Dia felt about what happened? I would say absolutely. Yeah, they were they were close sisters. They were super close. What what um what do you think 
Dia's response to Callie was when Callie spoke to her about what happened. If Dia says, we could have helped them and Tad wouldn't let us, what would Callie have said? Uh, back then? Mm -hmm. I mean, Callie, Callie didn't understand then either. She was, she wanted to help. Um, but she would have looked to her and probably said like, you know, this, this is the pride. This is, this is what keeps us safe and together. And this is, this is the way. <laughs> That's what we said. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Callie, I want you with your current stats to make an insight check. You see this memory play out. You actually see this moment of Callie, younger you, talking to your younger sister. And you see it happening. And I want you to make an insight check on your younger version of your sister. 14. Okay. You didn't notice it at the time. But you see it now. You see that moment where everything of your relationship with your sister changed. Because this is the moment where you headed toward the same path as your father. Your denial of the gods, of their power, of their of their control over the world. But you see now in the eyes of your sister as if she realized that she could never be fully honest with you ever again. Mm. And then it fades. And that smoke is gone. And then you see a memory that's not your memory. Maybe it's Seza's. Maybe it's Dia's. You're not sure. But you know this is in the early days of their relationship when they often would have trysts together running off beyond the approved borders of the pride. And they're in this same hallowed ground, this, this battlefield that your people allowed to happen in, in her mind. And you see the beginnings of Dia and Seza both learning how to use the arcane. You remember this time in your life, you, you, you can tell by how old she is, that this is when you had begun to train and you'd begun to learn martial combat. And you know Dia was never physically as strong as you. She was never able to hold her own in battle. But she had the markings of a young magic user. She and her girlfriend would often go off together and train together and increase their power together. And you hear her say to Seza on this field, we should have been able to stop this. What happens when it's our people and no one helps us? And then the smoke fades again. And you move further into the cave. And as you do, these memories continue. And Seza and Dia are older. And they are both, you remember your sister getting powerful. You remember being very proud of her, I imagine because she was a warrior of the Swift Claws. Yeah. Her weapons were magic, but they were hers. She, you was, know that she was next in line to be the matriarch. She was. How, uh, in fact, you are witnessing essentially her, I don't want to say graduation, but this is when she's being awarded for completing her training. Right. She's being deemed a, a, a priestess or of the rich, the rich, we'll say the ritual keeper of the pride. She and says it both, maybe a couple of other girls around their age who are still in their training process are there. And your sister's being given a, like a, a banner, a medal that denotes her place as the next in line for the matriarch and how do you feel about it? Just seeing her get her major, like the, the awards and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I think at that time, that's pretty close to around when Seza started, not Seza, uh, Dia started like getting involved with the 
the outside world a little bit more, started talking to the disciples mm -hmm. of uh, Frika. And so I think at that point when she sees that, she starts to remember the feeling of like anxiety and just not understanding what her sister was doing at that time. And also just like that, the knowingness that this is going to be the next person to lead us and they are leading us to our doom kind of feeling. Interesting. You see a better memory. This is that same day. And you see an argument between Dia and Seza. And Seza is saying to Dia, why can't you just leave it? Where you've got it, you are, you've ascended you're the matri you're the next matriarch you're you've got your power and dia is frustrated she's saying i have learned everything these people can teach me and it is not enough what happens when someone comes for this land and i am not strong enough to defend it and you know at this moment watching this memory that this is the moment when Dia started to reach out to other people and other powers. And you see her reaching out to followers of many gods. You see her reaching out to Phoenix at first. She tries to reach out to Clothis, who seems to not respond to her prayers. And then eventually she meets these followers of Farika. They seem peaceful enough. They don't seem corrupted. They don't seem cruel or evil in any way. One of them, in fact, make another uh, insight. Make a perception check for me with advantage. Uh, okay. Four, two, I don't know what the... Uh, Twelve. Okay. Zindar, also make a perception check for me at advantage. Actually, I'm not even gonna make you make this check because you are Zindar. You see your father in this group of followers of Farika. Callista, you see a man who looks like a human, older version of Zindar. He doesn't look again like he's scheming. He looks like he's just a priest or a follower of this goddess. And you see your sister demanding to learn the secrets that he knows. And you see the desperation in her eyes as she demands this information. And he helps her, not out of malice, not out of any negative feelings. He just sees someone who is broken and who needs help and who needs teaching. And he and his people teach her. And then they pass, they move along. They moved back to, you know, they were just passing through. They were perhaps on a pilgrimage. Perhaps they were just traveling somewhere, right place, right time. She learned a little bit of, of information about Farika. We cut forward a little bit longer. You move deeper into the cave. And this is where your memory is a little hazy because you kind of, it's a little Rashomon at this point. You know how you remember it. You know that your sister eventually learned to contact Farika directly and demand power from her. And that she and Seza started to have a falling out, but Seza was so in love with her. She was blinded to, she was trying up until she died to reach her. But you can see as these flashes of memories come through, it's almost like a montage of these moments where Seza is reaching out to Dia, and Dia is further and further away from her. And you see this as the decline in the relationship, where Seza is afraid of this power that Dia has been accumulating. And they're separated. Um, Zendar, to answer your question, um, Callie is, I don't know, how old is, how old are you, Callie? Uh, she, she's like, like, Leonans have like a human, 
life lifespan. Okay. So I would say like she's like close to her thirties. Okay. This is not before you were born, Zendara. This is just maybe a time when your dad was on a trip or your dad was doing something traveling in some way. So you, you that's why you recognize him immediately. You don't have to roll for it because he's alive in your time span. No, I, I was I was trying to think out loud if he would have been with like a family friend or with his father at that mm. point. You could be with the father. I think I think it's okay for I didn't want to put that on you as a player. No, that was fine. I think, I think, I think, I think it would just be like interesting. Yeah. yeah. I mean I was like there's no way in heck younger than you. I mean, he would have had a head wrap. Yeah. He would have saw like so. a green skin into a small kid, but Aww. he would have been there with him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Yeah. You, you, know, you see a young teenage boy who has his hair wrapped up in a, in a turban. And, but you, you never would have thought you never would have made the connection before because he didn't matter that much to you at that point in his life. But now you see, this is your friend Zindar. And now we see that Dia and Seza have broken up. They've had a fight. And you see Dia head off to this secret place that she's been going to. And you know this place because this is where you faced her down when you got your powers from Erebos. But this is before that. You see her, the altar she has made that she uses to summon Farika. And you see Farika has taken an interest in your sister. She's intrigued by her. She sees her as this potential to heal or to poison. Your sister is on the precipice of being able to lead your pride to greatness or to be the decay that destroys your pride from the inside. And that is very intriguing to Farika. And you see these moments in your memory of Farika the goddess seducing your sister and poisoning her against your people. But then you see the smoke shift away again and reform. And as I said, in a very Rashomon style, you see the same scenes playing out where your sister is the one doing the seduction. Your sister, Farika, is intrigued by her and is falling for her in the way that gods often do for mortals and willing to do whatever this mortal of hers is asking of her. Maybe, maybe she's feeling a little bit of joy from this connection to mortality again, you don't know. But you see that Dia is so obsessed with getting the power she needs to protect her people that she will do whatever it takes to get this goddess on her side. Mm -hmm. And you realize that these memories you're seeing are the memories of Seza, who was watching her from afar. Mm -hmm. And the truth is somewhere in the middle, perhaps. Maybe there's a version where she was led astray by this poisonous god. Maybe there's a version where it was your sister's own ambitions, her own poison, that drew the attention of this god. The first time in your life you're starting to question if things happened exactly as you remember them. Oh, God. She's just going to start swatting at the smoke probably at this point. Just like, no! No! This it isn't fades. what happened. And the smoke dissipates. And then briefly you see smoke. And you know what this moment is. You know this is the moment that you approached Erebos and you begged for the ability to stop your sister. And I'm going to make you tell me how this moment played out. How did you... How did you summon Erebos? Uh, if I remember correctly, um, he is the god of death. So uh, Kali rounded up, I think, as many... I think she like went to like a cemetery area um, and looked for things that were dying or close to dying, um, brought them to 
a place of death um, and just kind of like killed, um, killed them. And um, yeah, she, she went on kind of a bit of a spree trying to summon him, but not like uh, mortals that were like, it was mostly like, why it's still not good, but wildlife and um, whatnot. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and you see this bargain that you made with Erebos where you agreed to be his bounty hunter for returned until he deemed the contract fulfilled and he would give you the power you needed to destroy a demigod essentially mm -hmm. because this is the level of power and then you see these flashes of this brutal battle that you had with your sister as these two forces of divinity clashed with each other this god of healing of poison this god of death and how their powers overlapped and how they you fought with strength that you normally would not have had and even after you defeated her you did not continue to contain this much strength until eventually your sister was dead and this threat to your pride this poison that sought to drain it of all of its power was gone and then you see this memory again of two Leonin children looking over a battlefield and the paths that diverged from there. And when the smoke is gone, you see not, you see in this same space where this altar had been, where this battle had happened, you see a form. It is not a returned as you expected to see. It is the glimmering ethereal image of what you know of as an Eidolon, the psychic presence, the soul, the spirits of a creature that has escaped from the underworld as opposed to the memoryless body of a returned. And it is your sister. And she looks like she's in pain. Yeah, I mean, Callie's gonna immediately run to her. She's gonna be cautious. She's gonna have her sword, but she's going to run to her. Dia! Dia? I can't... Callie? What are you doing here? I just wanted to see everyone again. I wanted to say I was sorry, but I made it all bad. Why are you still here then? I don't know where to go. I just wanted to see you. I wanted to say I was sorry. I, I, I don't need you to apologize to me. I don't, you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for what I did and what I had to do. I'm, I'm sorry for what I did to you. Didn't do anything to me. I, I made a choice. I made a choice for the, for the pride and for for myself and I I have been in control of myself this whole time. Have you? Yeah. I mean what do you mean by that? You're so angry. Of course of, of course I'm angry. You're angry at yourself. I, I don't under, I don't know what I could have done. I, I've tried so hard to, to fix this and to stop it. And you're, you're back, you're here. And I, 
I, I don't know where I could have done better. And she looks at you and she puts her hands out and you kind of feel this warmth. It's a weird combination of warmth and cold at the same time on your face. She's and she said, and she, I'm sorry, I didn't, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. I'm sorry. I, so, sorry, you just freaked me out. I, I, I don't, I don't know what you, I don't know if I. I poisoned everything. I poisoned the land. I poisoned the pride. And I poisoned you. Everything else has, well, until I returned, everything else had healed. But you never healed. You've been mad at yourself ever since. And you've been decaying ever since. And it's my fault. And I'm sorry. I just wanted to help. I wanted to protect everyone. I, I, hey, I get, I get that. I do. But you, you can't stay here. You've got to go. I know. Like, you're just like, thank you for trying so hard. You had so much weight on your shoulders that you didn't need to have. So do you. Still. I need you to do something for me, Callie. What? I need you to forgive yourself. I need you to stop hating yourself for what happened to me. I can't rest until you do. I made you do it. It wasn't your fault and you're mad at yourself and you hate yourself and it's not your fault. I need you to stop. Would, would you have made any other choice if I had been there to support you? You were always there. I was the one who was lost. Okay. And she takes a moment and she says, will you forgive yourself for me? Yeah, 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 sure. I need you to really do it. She'll like take a moment to like throw her head back. Ugh. Uh, okay. Um, I, I do. I, I do. I really, I do. Does she mean it? She does. Okay. She um, also wants to kill Erebos, like nothing else right now. <laughs> um, you feel that coldness in the space start to fade away. And that warmth that you felt when she touched you is there. And the kind of blighted, decaying stench that you've been smelling starts to fade away. And you see that your sister is starting to fade as well as she is now at peace. And you see her starting to form. You've seen this happen before with Eidolon, where she's turning into the shape of a cat. Because this is a, a gift that has been given to them by key of the sage and your presence around her I've been touched by her has helped her find her passage but before she shaped, changes all the way she leans forward and she this time she asks you first and she says can I can I give you a hug before I go yeah 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 okay okay and she'll and she, grab on really tight and as she hugs you, she leans forward and she whispers in your ear, your friend is the son of Farika. And then she's gone. 
And that is where we are going to end tonight's session. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> oh, juicy. I imagine it's like one of those hugs where it's just like she doesn't like go until it just like it's nothing. Yeah, it's a long hug. And then she says that. And then she's gone. And that's what we're gonna end. Now we're in a cave together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> I didn't know. You know, I was wondering when like this drama was. Now you know why the <laughs> <laughs> you know, the we're looking after you um <laughs> yeah so Whoop. that's tonight's session um thank you all for for sitting through some of that and uh letting that play out uh ashlyn are you doing okay oh yeah i'm fine great that was fun um <laughs> i'm not um all right i know i um, almost <laughs> Um, let us just quickly go around the table and everybody can say where the folks at home can find you uh, Start with uh, Jordan. Sorry, I, 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 that's my job. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm still Jordan Pridgen. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Jordan Pigeon. Um, and if you want to find my other work, uh, my other RPG work, uh, you can go check out some of the older shows on the channel, like uh, Wild Cards and Legacy and uh, The Broken Pact. Lots of shows like that. I've got a bunch on there, and they're all pretty fun. And if you are a fan of Commander, uh, keep an eye out on the Command Zone channel tomorrow unless you're watching this on YouTube later, in which case, just go there and look for the thing that came out uh, <laughs> the 28th. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> it's going to be fun, and it's going to involve me and other people who you'll recognize immediately. And that's me. All right, let's uh, let's go over to, uh, to Joy. Joy, where can the folks at home find you? Hello, you can find me here on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube sometimes, Curious Joy everywhere, and yeah, I don't really have much going on in the future except <laughs> Extra Life. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, yeah so that's next week, and it's be my sixth year doing it. Wow. Nice. Yeah. That's lovely. <laughs> uh, Omega, where can the folks find you? Hey, uh, yeah, you can find me everywhere at Critical Bard, at Critical Bard across all social media channels. Uh, you can also find me on episodes of New Pantheon Academia over here on Saving Throw Show, uh, where I play another person connected to a god. Who would have thought? Uh, you can catch me uh, also many places, including Realmsmith, Rock Punch ATL, um, uh, my, my streams, because I'm a Twitch partner. Uh, and so much more, honestly. Uh, just look at the socials. I realized there was something I was supposed to post today, and Jordan reminded me somehow, and I went, oh, no. Hey. So I'll be posting Ooh. something tomorrow about a thing that I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yep, yep. Follow up on your deliverables. Uh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and of course our 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 focus our, our hero our heroine of the night, uh, Ashlyn Rose. Ashlyn, where can folks find you? Hi, uh, you can find me on Twitter as Ashlyn Rose, on Instagram as Rar Cat um, Rar it's Ashlyn, and uh, yeah, check those places out. That's where I'm at mostly. Uh, I have my website with just mostly just VO stuff right now, um, and yeah, check uh, tomorrow, like Jordan said. Uh, we have a episode of Commander coming out if you're into that. And if not, like, check out the Saving Thread Show channel. We have tons of stuff on there. Um, Steph Jordan and I have been on. Riley, everyone that's in this cast um, have been on. So lots of fun stuff. And uh, I am Riley Silverman. You can find me on Twitter at Riley J. Silverman, Instagram at Riley Silverman. I have two big things this week. Uh, tomorrow is my second episode of Port Saga, the scripted Vampire the Masquerade podcast that I'm on. And it is one of my favorite ones of the season. Uh, I have a lot of my favorite lines in the entire run in tomorrow's episode. So I definitely recommend checking out, especially if you, especially if you really like Zelda as a character. So check it out. I'm really looking forward to seeing how it plays out. I had so much fun recording this section of it. Uh, and then Friday, uh, my group Ripley Improv that I'm in has done two major shows during the pandemic online. We did, uh, we, we're, we're doing our second season of Heartbeats right now, which is an improvised medical drama. And we also did Slay, which is an improvised monster hunter show. And on Friday, we're doing a special Halloween crossover of both of those. So we are going to have the monster hunters from Slay show up in the improvised medical drama hospital of 
heartbeats. And so it's going to be really wild and, and bizarre <laughs> and fun. And so it's really going to be, imagine if like, if Grey's Anatomy crossed over with Buffy somehow. So that's kind of how the feeling is on it. Um, and because those are the two main inspirations from both those shows. So check that out. That'll be Friday on twitch.tv slash Ripley Improv. So those are my big things here. Of course, uh, there is lots of stuff to check out on the channel. Uh, Dom, is there anything big coming up at the channel that we should check out? Nope. Okay. No more channel. All right. See you all later. No, um, yeah. But uh, as a reminder, please support the coffee page of the channel. Uh, help support the channel. Keep things like this on the air. Uh, we we are very excited. We were able to do so much fun stuff tonight with your donations. And yeah, uh, thank you very much. We have two more episodes of this season. And I am very excited to see how things play out. I'm excited to see how that last revelation plays out with things. And with that out of the way, y'all have a happy Halloween. And we will see you next week. Bye. Thank you.